All right, guys, thank you for joining us today on Instinctive Addiction. We got a good one for you today, okay? This is a really special one here, and it's by request, okay? We've got a brand new bow still in the box, unopened, that a guy just ordered. We're going to set this bow up. Uh, he just so happens to be the exact same draw length as Ty here, so it's going to be an easy one. Normally, we would need to know, you know exactly what the guy's draw length was. We'd need some information, but we have all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring you one today that will hopefully help you to set up that brand new bow. Let's just say you just ordered a brand new ILF rig. This one happened to come from Three Rivers and it's a brand new Hoyt Satori with uh, 3K carbon DOS limbs. So if you're going to order a uh, ILF rig uh, and you don't have a clue really what to buy what you need to do to get it set up, well that's what this video is going to be for today. We're going to hopefully help you solve that problem and make it easy for you so you don't blow any money. Okay, we're going to show you the right way to set one up from start to finish. We're going to kind of call this one from uh, box to broadheads because time we get done here and we're going to bear shaft tune the arrows. We have actually got a brand new dozen arrows here, uncut, full length, and we're going to bear shaft tune these arrows right here in the big blob and get the insert set up in it get this thing dialed in shooting right where when this guy gets it he's going to be extremely happy so that he can screw a broad head on and go to the woods that's what we're going to do for him okay so to start with we're going to open it up and show you what this guy's bought here uh he has bought a brand new hoyt satori i love these satoris by the way super nice bows man yeah they come in a beautiful case here uh look at that they come in a nice travel case ready to roll with everything you need. Open this bad boy up. Show y'all just how quick you can set up a brand new rig. Okay? Oh yeah, beautiful. He got the sniper green riser. Ain't that cool? Sniper green, that's a 17 inch riser. Alright, I'm gonna cut that thing yeah, off. Alright, of course they come with a few little accessories and normally now if you get the whole setup uh, like if you bought Velo Slams or whatnot, they probably would pack them in here, but normally when you get a riser, they're not going to have the limbs in the case, but it's got a place for you to put them. <clears throat> so what comes with a Hoyt Satori when you buy it, because I've had several of them, is a lovely cool keychain, uh, the new Hoyt Stringer, to me one of my favorite stringers, I've got one right there already open because I've got a Satori and I love those stringers. You get a pack of uh, Allen wrenches. Everything needed to tune this bow really quick like, okay? Of course, owner's manual, cool sticker for your truck, the Hoyt sticker, all that, let's lay them over there. Okay, now, just from experience, guys, this is gonna be a big help here, hopefully. From experience, if you're going with a Hoyt Satori, and this is the new one, which allows six full turns in and out, so it's plus or minus about three pounds either way. Now, we're going to be running seven 45-pound uh, long limbs on this thing because this guy is about, what, a 29-and-a-half yeah, inch draw. 29 He's 29-and-a-half inch, so we ordered long limbs, all right? So he'll get that butter smooth draw and a lot of speed, okay? But how they rate them is at medium setting. In other words, if you get a 45-pound limb, that is at a medium setting on the limb boats, okay? So if you bottom them all the way out, they're actually going to gain a couple of pounds, probably 47 pounds or whatnot. We'll scale it just to see kind of what it does. But anyway, so right now they come bottomed out. That's what they've got these. And when we put these on, we're going to check the tiller and we're going to get this thing set up real quick like. But here's my point. This little baggie that comes with it is a Hoyt side plate and some silencing material. It comes with a little rug rest. Let me show y'all. Most of this you're going to throw in the garbage. Don't get mad at me, but that's what's going to happen. Okay. Number one, it comes with shims. Comes with two shims. They go behind your Hoyt side plate. You don't need them. You don't need the shims. Now, if you're shooting a super skinny arrow, super, super skinny arrow, yes, you might want to put a shim or two behind it if you had to bring your plate out but I have never had to do that on any that I've done but I always keep them just in case I need to all right number two thing that's mine 
it, number two, if you over tighten the screw that goes into the side of this plastic, it will strip very, very easy. In other words, a half turn too much is stripped, so you'll have to glue it on. I wind up gluing all mine anyway because I don't ever want them coming loose. All right, so it actually comes with three shim plates. Yep, three shim plates and a screw. And it also comes with two little bitty, don't lose them, two little bitty, little bitty studs. Now what these are for, these are extras for locking in your limb alignments. Actually, yeah, these are extra limb alignment bolts. That's what those are. Okay, now, I'm going to lay all those right there. It comes with good calf hair material. Calf hair material to stick on the side plate. Fine and good. That's, that's a good, good setup. But all we do is we put calf hair material, which I did buy a little piece here with it, a piece of calf hair material, just to put on this riser, okay? That is the way to set these up, actually. I've got it uh, laying over here somewhere. Figure out where I put it at, the little piece of calf hair. It's in a little, little plastic pack somewhere. So that's what we're going to need, which I keep plenty of it anyway. All right. So I'm going to fold this up and get this out of the way here. There it is right there, a piece of calf hair. Always order you a piece of calf hair material. If you're ordering from Three Rivers, you can order it, or you can use what comes with the bow for limb backing material. Works just fine too. Same exact stuff. But I don't use this limb backing material. I don't use this. I use good old Velcro. Velcro, real Velcro. Cut it just like these. Way quieter. Way quieter than the calf hair on the back of your limbs. I'm going to show you guys how to do that too. All right, so now the limbs. Best limbs money can buy for 350 bucks. There's not a better limb made, guys. We did all the full videos on these shooting 3D tournaments. They're extremely fast, extremely smooth limbs. To me, they shoot as good as any limb that money can buy. I have not found anything to beat them yet very nice limbs so that's why we recommended going with these and we actually <coughs> ordered long because of the draw length so as a rule of thumb if you're 28 inch draw or less medium limbs are great if you're past 28 inches you need to go with a long limb for sure it just gives you that little extra if you're going to run a 17 inch riser and even on a 19 to me if a man's drawing that long of a draw length i think you need the long limbs it's just going to be ultra smooth and uh, that's what you like. So here we have some beautiful limbs. Yep. All right, ILF rigs are super easy. They really are. So the first thing we do, you gotta look on there and see what's the bottom. DOS bows, right DOS bows, bottom limb. They're super easy, okay? Limb attachment, there's nothing to it whatsoever on a Satori. They simply snap into, you hear the little click, okay? Snap them bad boys in. There it goes, until they snap in. Now, I'm also going to show you guys how, how to align the limbs once we get it on. It's really easy once we go to tuning this thing up. So what I'm going to do, the first thing, bottom limb is what's crucial. These little studs here. There we go. Takes the wee little bitty Allen key. Okay. Make sure... All right, good. They got them all in. So these are extras in case you strip one, which is very, very good. I need to probably put all these extras up in case we need them. I'll need this to put in the side plate, but we'll keep those just in case we need it. But I'll show you guys how to line the limbs up once we get this thing on because it's very critical that those lines are perfectly vertical, okay, for the boat of tune right. All right, so now that we've snapped the limbs on, next thing we want to do before we even go to stringing it which we have a brand new, really good string for this thing. Uh, this is the best string that Three Rivers actually offers. Uh, now, I personally, you guys know I love the TTT strings. I run them on everything I've got, but not everybody's ordering custom strings. Most people are buying them from Three Rivers and different suppliers, and these are the exact same strings. These are 8152 Fast Flight, super, super good strings. These are very high quality strings right here. And there we go. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put limb backing material. 
silencing where that limb with a string slaps against the limb when you shoot it you've got to silence that on a recurve because you will get noise right where that limb is touching the string or the strings touching the limb okay all right so get this backing off that's why I like velcro buddy it sticks it didn't didn't come off good good stuff yeah, I got him now. Yeah, boy, it does stick. And what you want to do, you want to put him, if you can see the limb groove right there, what you want to do is start right at the top of your limb groove. Right at the string groove. Right at the top of the string groove. Line it up and just mash it down. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it will serve the purpose. Okay? All right. Love these rigs. They're super easy and very accurate. There we go. All right. So lambs are popped in. Silencing materials on the back. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the string silencers before we string this bow up. Now, the way I like to do them is I like to get the string in the neighborhood. Determine top and bottom of the string, of course. The bigger loop typically is going to be your top is going to be this one. It's going to be top. So, hook the bottom, hook the, bo little, hook the top on and slide it down. Okay? Hook it on, slide it down. Now to adjust it, you know these strings have been twisted, so we're going to start out giving it a couple of twists to begin with because we know that it's probably going to come in low on the brace height. Okay? Alright, so, I'm going to put it on here. Now, What we're going to do is we're going to eyeball the distance. We know that if this thing were strung, we're going to want that silencer somewhere right in here, and we can just look and measure it from the end of the Flemish twist pretty easy. So we want to put the string silencers on next. That's the easiest thing while it's unstrung. So which is going to be, I'm going to say right in here. You don't want them just dead middle ways. You want them a little bit toward the lower third. And all you do is split the string, which this is a pre-bundle, so it doesn't really matter. Alright, now these are Navajo wolf silencers, the best money can buy, okay? Lots of good ones out there, but these Navajo wool, when you shoot these in, they are very, very quiet, very quiet. All you do is put it in flat, spread them out, twist your string up a little bit, make sure that it is even, running right along the middle there, even, okay? So, that looks good. There we go, from the end of the twist. Now, what I'll do is I'll take that one loose. Okay. And I'll pull this one up to the top of the limb groove just to judge the distance. Just like this up here. And you can move them. Once you put them in, you can slide them. Not a problem at all. Okay. Not a problem. be really good. Alright, slide this one back down because we're about to string this thing up. First time it's ever been strung. We're going to see where this brace height comes in it. And you guys know that they're going to move a little bit. When you shoot them they're going to stretch just a little bit so you got to keep an eye on them with that bow square. And what I do I have for my Satori's I have a square that has Satori marks on it because I've had so many of them. Nice new little stringer here. And I've got, I've got mine marked, and these things are made to run seven and a half to eight and a half inches. I do not run eight and a half inches on any bow. Seven and three quarters the magic mark for me. That just seems where the bows perform best. Seven and three quarters is great. Now it can be a little here, a little there. It doesn't have to be dead on that by any means. Okay, but that's way way tall. Okay. So we're going to have to unstring her a little bit with these long limbs. Alright guys, got this figured out easy. It took a couple of twists to come out of the string. We got her right here at eight and a half. 
I prefer it to be, like I said, seven and three quarters is my magic number on medium limbs. These are long limbs, so I checked on it, and medium limbs typically run an eight to eight and a half. They really do, but I still like a seven and a half, seven and three quarters, yep. my personal. Okay, so bear in mind, if you order a Satori riser versus a DOS riser, Satori risers are three quarters of an inch longer. So if you order a 62 inch string, you don't have a lot to play with when you're backing it off. I mean, you can get in the range just fine and they're gonna stretch in some, but if you really wanna back it down and get it where you want it, even down to seven inch brace height or whatnot, seven and a half, something like that, you're gonna need to order a custom string and get one a little longer because store-bought strings don't give you a whole lot of options. Whereas like, like TTT strings, uh, you can contact Trevor there on Facebook all day long and say, hey, I got a Satori riser with long limbs. 62 inch bow but i need it to come in just a little longer than a standard and he knows that a satori riser is three quarters of an inch longer okay so or you can call the guys at three rivers and explain i need a string a little longer maybe an inch longer for a 63 inch bow if there was such a thing and it'll be perfect okay so we're in range we got everything good and i'm going to show you guys how to line the limbs up on a new satori now okay this is all super easy what you do you take the set screws. These are limb alignment screws right here. Barely loosen them, okay? Gonna do one limb at a time here. One limb at a time. Barely loosen them. This is the quick way, guys, without having to have a gauge and all this stuff. Okay? Draw the limb, let it down. Thump it a couple of times. The string will naturally settle in where it needs to go, okay? Very, very easy. Tighten them back down. Now they come from the factory very close when you buy Hoyt, because you're buying quality and Hoyt knows how to set a riser up even in the box. They come from the factory pretty much perfect. But just to be sure, barely loosen your limb alignment screws up just a little bit. Just a little. Let the string settle. Wool puffs are shedding on me here. Tighten them back up, okay? Very easy. All right, guys. Now, now that we have that, we are going to check the tiller. Now, these are bottomed out, at least close to it. You want to go right up onto the bottom of the limb here and look, and these right here are exactly six and five eighths. Boy, that's close. Now you won't. Here's what you got to figure out. You're going to shoot three under or you're going to shoot split finger. If you're going to shoot split, you need no less than an eighth inch positive on the top. In other words, you want an eighth inch more distance between the string and the top limb than you do the bottom limb. The bottom limb has to be stronger to shoot split finger. If you're shooting three under, tiller them even. Just get them as close to even as you can, okay? And buddy, these are close. We need just a little tiny bit of adjustment. And I mean just a tiny bit. Now, all you do with these, they have a lock screw on the back. You have to unlock it before you do anything. Unlock it, and we're gonna tighten this one She's bottomed out. Tighten her back up. I like them bottomed out myself. I like them. I like them to get all you can. But you can adjust these out. Uh, according to Hoyt, six full turns. Okay, uh, at a max. And I don't do that. Four to five kind of gets me on the nervous side. I don't like them. But you can see them. You can see how far you're going out. But I don't like to back a limb bolt out anymore. Than that bows tend to get loud when you back them out that hard. Uh, so it's basically just like a compound. All right, so, dead even. Dead even tiller. Both should be good, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put a side plate on this thing and some rest material, and we're gonna set the knock, and we're gonna double knock it, okay? Test fit this little thing. All you do is just set it in there just like that. And 
These are pre-cut to fit it perfect. There you go. Beautiful. Take our little screw. Find the Allen wrench that fits it right there. If you over tighten this, you will strip it. Okay? They are plastic. You go to tightening a metal screw into a plastic thread, it's going to strip. Snug it. That's it. Snug it, leave it alone. It will not ever go anywhere. If you do strip it, put some super glue behind it. No big deal. Alright, silencing material. We need our scissors and our calf hair material. We'll use this right here. And we're gonna make us some rest material here really fast. Because what happens, guys, this funky rug rest that they send with it does not work. Worst thing they could ever send. Nobody likes them. Everybody gets rid of them. Everybody that owns a Satori gets rid of these things real fast. So all we do, we're going to lay this on this piece of limb backing that came with these limbs. Remember, or they actually come in the Hoyt pack. Even though the bow didn't come with limbs, they came in the pack. And we're going to duplicate this little thing just by trimming it off real easy. There we go. We cut the little moon out of it. Should be good. Cut my little edges off. All right, let me test fit it. And there's a certain way the hair runs. You want the hair running out. There we go. That's all you need. That's it. Beautiful. Okay. Stick this on here, and that's on a, a shelf shooting bow. You can do anything you want to with these bows, but everybody shoots them off the shelves. And Hoyt Satori's are very, very good shelf shooting bows. They are. Very good bows to shoot off the shelf. There we go. Okay. Alright, there we go. That's all you need. Now, next thing we're going to do is put a knock on here. Here's a pack of knocks that we ordered. I only bought four, I bought mediums. Now, I like to tie knocks on, and I probably will tie some on this one later. But some people like the brass knocks because they like to adjust them themselves. But the tie knocks, all you do is twist them. Super easy anyway. But I like a tied knock. I like the feel of them. But we're going to do this on this one for sure. Five eighths above center. I have a mark. You guys can see. I have a mark at five eighths. That little, that little sharpie mark. That is where the bottom of my knocks on a Hoyt Satori always sit. That seems to be the place to tune. Now we can tweak it if it needs it, but generally that's where they always like to go. Uh, shooting three under. Now if you're going to shoot split finger, you're going to set it up that way. You can shoot a little lower knock set. You don't have to go quite that high. And the highest you ever want to go is probably somewhere around three quarters of an inch. Okay. Slide that off. All right. Now what I like to do, take an arrow. Whatever arrow you're going to shoot out of this bow for your secondary knock, and you want just enough room. And there again, we can move these real easy if we need to. Click you an arrow on there. Put your knock on there and slide it up to where it almost touches it. Not enough to pinch it, but enough that your arrow won't slide up and down. You don't you don't want that thing sliding up and down at all. Especially right about the time you release. You don't want that. Okay. Alright. Like I said, we can move these any way we need to, if we need to. Not a problem. Okay, so basically, basically this bow is set up. And what we're going to do, we're going to bear shaft tune this. Now, he wants to run, he wants to run, as a matter of fact, we can go ahead and put it on. He wants to run a strap and a stabilizer. I got one on mine and I absolutely love them. These kind you just loosen up right here. 
pull them right out, put them in there a lot easier than the braided ones. Alright, so, super easy. And, just stick her back through there, tighten it up. That thing's got a little wash on the end. Yeah, on these ILF rigs, running a short stabilizer does balance the bow real well. And if you're coming from shooting a compound, say you were a compound shooter for years, making the switch to a trad bow like this makes life easier because you still get a little bit of that feel of a compound with the modern grip and just the feel of the riser itself. You, you really do. These are, these are so easy. I love them. Okay. Done deal. There we go. And see the bow's counterweighted. See I'm holding it open handed. See how well the bow's balanced? Perfect weight match. Super accurate. Okay, cool. Alright, so now it is time to do some bear shaft tuning. This bow is actually set. All we've got to do is bear shaft it. That's it. We've got everything ready to roll. So what we're going to do, here's the fun part, guys. We have I fletched these arrows last night. I fletched these up. I left one unfletched because it doesn't take me but five minutes to fletch one once I've got the wrap on there. So since we're going to shoot a wrap, we're going to try to duplicate as close to the weight as the setup as we're going to be shooting out of this boat. Okay, Ty's got the long draw length, so he's going to be the shooter, and we're going to bear shaft tune it into that blob right there. A real good medium that will tell the tale. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to test draw, first of all, on a, say, a 29-inch draw, approximately where this arrow is going to come in, and I'm going to mark it, because we're not going to leave it completely full length, but it's going to be close with that kind of draw length, okay? Because if I'm not wrong, these arrows are like 31 inches, okay? So we're going to let him draw it, let me take a look at it from the side, and just see roughly and we're going to start long and we're going to cut down right quick until this thing bear shafts really good okay go ahead and draw her. just get a good anchor in, in case he draws a little further i don't know i think we need to leave it full length to start with because you don't have so. a whole lot to play with with that long of a draw now me i'd cut three inches off of it right off the bat before i even started with my draw length but and i'm gonna overdraw know. just a little bit to compensate okay a little bit of his length. all right so and it's better to do that so now here's the cool part y'all what we're going to do, we already know, we already know for sure that the guy that we're setting this bow up for is not your broadhead sharpening sitting at the table for three hours a night sharpening broadheads like we do. Everybody's not into that. They don't want the maintenance. They don't want the work. They want to go hunt. Okay, cool. So what we recommend in that case is to go with a Magnus. 150 grain buzz cut Magnus. Best head money can buy in my opinion. I don't think you can beat them. So regardless of that, anything of 150 grain head is what we're dealing with. So to bear shaft tune this guy, and we're going to see how easy this is or if we have to actually do any cutting. We're going to start out with a 150 grain broad uh, fill tip and a 100 grain brass insert. Now if we were using ethics systems, which we have plenty of, if we wanted to go with the ethics system, we would have to determine, okay, if we have a 50 grain uh, outsert and we got a, I mean, or you have 50 or 60 and a 60 grain post, we would have a little bit too much weight probably. We're going to stick with the 100 grain brass because with gold tip arrows, 100 grain brass works fine. But if we did want to use ethics, all we'd have to do is weigh it up to where we're running no more than 150 grains total weight with the system, okay? It'd be super easy to do, not a problem. But we're going to take this 100 grain, and we're fixing to heat this thing up, put it in here, and we're going to bear shaft tune it right quick and see what it does. That's why I like hot melt. Now, when we get our final cut, we will actually make sure that the end of that arrow is squared with our squaring tool right here and all that. We're going to make sure, uh, but we're just going to see off the bat what it even does because we don't, we don't really know. All you have to do is just heat that stuff up and get enough on there to... Get it all the way around on both sides, not overcook it. Quality like boning, boning is a very, very good hot milk. Very good. You want to spin it, 
push it down for a second, let it push. Okay. And then we'll peel the excess off and we're about to start bare shaft tuning. Now our our job here is to make sure that a man that's drawing a 29 to 29 and a half inch draw, that this 400, by the way, this is a 400 go tip, okay? Why did we pick a 400 to start with? Because we're gonna shoot 250 grains on front of this, this guy's setup. 250 up front, a 500 will not be stiff enough. It will not. And it may even be that if we were running 300 grains plus, he may need a 340. But we're thinking that a traditional 400 is going to be plenty heavy enough spine out of a 45 pound boat. Okay, now if he was more weight and all that and more point weight, yeah, we might need to go a little more, but that's not going to be the case. Okay, all right, so we got that thing. Uh, let me cool it just a hair. All right, Mr. Bear Chef, we're going to step right around here and we're going to try and see what happens. Actually, I'm going to shoot it from here. Really. I would. I would shoot it from here and let it let it act. Just let it see, see what it's going to do. And you always want to do it with a bow vertical where it doesn't give you a false reading. You just do, keep the bow vertical. <laughs> pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty close. <laughs> That's what we were hoping for. We were hoping it was not way tail left because what happens, guys? why I drew this line here uh, where, where ho hopefully you can see we drew a vertical line so that if this arrow was weak and I'm telling you that that is really good we're gonna do it a couple times but if this arrow was weak it would be coming out of the bow tail left it would okay if it was stiff it would be tail right which if it's stiff you can add weight to to weaken the shaft if it if it was uh, I mean if it was if it was too stiff you can add weight. If it's too weak we would have to start cutting and cutting and cutting till till we got that thing to come around straight. Okay. Pretty good. Oh, that thing man. drives up in there. Duh. Yeah. I think this guy's setup is going to be an easy one. That's what we were hoping. Okay. One more time. One more time. We'll see what it does. See if we can duplicate this. That's as good as it gets. It's pretty close. That's as good as it gets, guys. We're not cutting that arrow. He's no. a full length man. He's no. gonna shoot a full length arrow. Okay, good. So now, I understand this makes our job so easy. If that thing were stiff, we would have to start cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting until it come around. And if it got too short for the archer where he wasn't safe with a broadhead, we'd have to go up a spine and arrow. Yeah. But he is perfect. We picked the perfect arrow. We ordered 400s for these 45-pound limbs. Let's scale these limbs. Put that, uh, put the arrow on there actually, and get that scale out. And we're going to draw this, and we're going to see what this bow is drawing weight-wise. I'm, I'm curious as to exactly what this is pulling to spine perfectly with a full-length 400 with 300, uh, you know two, about um, 250 that grains up front. You know about where that arrow was at, stop. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you. Alright. Let me know when. Okay. Come on back. Come on back. Alright. That's it. 55 pounds. 55. 55 See that, that long draw length makes a difference. Let's try okay. One more time. Now it could have been a little false. Draw it a little shorter just in case he doesn't draw quite that much, but it's I am thinking it's gonna be pretty close. Alright. Right at fifty. 50? Yeah. Okay. That's that's Let's normal. Because it's bottom down. Like I said, these are 45 pound limbs. They got three pounds plus or minus yeah. adjustment. So we know coming in at 45 on middle setting, we had 48 pounds at 28. If he's 29, he's pulling 50 it's pounds. About 49 and a half 50 right Okay, there. so Most that's it. Pounds. On a 29 inch draw, he's cracking 50 pounds. Yeah. There you go. That's why you don't want to buy 50 pound limbs because you're going to be 55 pounds at full draw. Okay? So don't overdo yourself on limb poundage. Good deal. So all I gotta do is flesh this last one up, and this man's set. You want to go okay. Broad head so let's them. let's do this. Let's do this. Let's glue in. Let's glue in one. We'll shoot one with a field tip. Then we're gonna put a broadhead on it. We're gonna see how this thing flies a broadhead. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. These bows are super easy to set up, guys. Like I said, the only thing if you're gonna buy a Satori riser, make darn sure you get a little bit longer string. That's the only issue we ran into with this one. And we keep it real here, guys. It is what it is. We keep it uh, as real as it can be. There we go. 150 grain field tip. 
100 grain brass insert, 250 grains total weight. That's what we're gonna run. My pliers don't wanna hold that thing. Yeah, be hot. they do get a little hot. You don't wanna try to hold that, that's for sure. Keep your pliers handy. And hot melt works just fine. I love it if it's quality and you get plenty on there. Uh, now what we'll do, guys, before we actually turn this loose, is we will clean the insides of these shafts with acetone and all that, and we're going to glue him in permanent. We're actually probably, we might keep the hot milk. That's pretty. That's fine. Not a problem with that. But we're going to clean them really good. Right now, we're we're just we're shooting them and testing them, so that's okay. But before we turn him loose, we're going to make sure that the inside that there is no carbon buildup or anything to cause that glue not to stick. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Still hot, huh? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. And this stuff, if you let it naturally cool for a minute, it, it's actually stronger than if you just dunk it in water and quick cool it. It really is. So what we'll be able to do, now let me see how these arrows are actually not turn oriented to this bow. Because we like to shoot cock feather out as a habit or up, whatever. On those the tradition was out on yeah. the... Uh, on the so. Yeah, yep, cock feather. That's how we bear shafted it, right there. Cock feather out, little GPI label out. They're all the same, they're all identical. Should be to where these things are going to be super easy to tune. Now, this knock, I thought I had this a little closer. It needs to be. Yeah. And we the more we it. shoot it, let me do that. Let me, I may not have tightened that up enough. Let me, let me scoot that up just a hair because we want to make sure all that's perfect. Make sure the top one had not moved. Right? The top one could have moved. Yeah, I'd check it and make sure. Yeah, let me do that. This string's a little bigger than normal. It's 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 actually a little bigger. It's perfect. Yeah, it's yeah. still right on. I'm gonna make sure it's cranked good. Brass knocks are easy. That's for sure. Charm. All right, buddy. She should be cool enough. Go. No problem. Now, see, looking at this, let me show them this real quick. Looking from the side, when you're shooting a 5 8 knock set, the tail end of the arrow is just slightly elevated. It's not sitting flat. You have to have the knock end up a little bit, or it will ramp off of your riser. You have to have that. So, 5 8 generally is the magic uh, mark on 3 under. It typically is. All right, so let's fire that thing in there. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so now what we'll do. You wanna shoot that chrono one time real quick with that field point? Yeah. Just yeah. See what it's doing. yeah, we'll shoot it. Now this, let me weigh this arrow while he's setting up the chronograph. Like I said, this is good. This is a heavy arrow and no doubt about that. So let's just see what this thing weighs, guys. Out of pure curiosity. Okay. Get it to stay on there. <laughs> Close to the 582. Close to 600. 582 grains. If you put a luminox on it, it's going to be a 600 grain arrow. And we will shoot luminox. So with a lighted knock, it'll be a 600 grain arrow. That's what you want for hunting. Plenty, plenty of weight. Plenty. There we go. So, so what do you guess it's going to shoot? 165 is my guess. You got to back it up enough that it passes through. 174. 174. That's not wow. bad. That's a lot quicker than I thought it would be with that heavy of an arrow. It is. Yeah, back it up I'll show you guys the difference, difference in arrows. This is the one that we did the video on that we built the go tip airstrikes weighing the same thing. Check this out. Let me zero it out. This go tip airstrike. This one here, 550 grains. So you got a 550 right here without a. Without an insert, 
168. So ballpark in 170 on that big, you know, heavy arrow. Okay. You're having them in there too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Alright, now, you shoot one of them through there to see the difference. We're going to show you just how fast these air strikes are, the difference in these things, and they're within uh, 30 grains, 30, 35 grains of the same weight. They are but they are so fast. They're coated, they're painted with a slick coating, small diameter. Woo. 174. Yeah. So, yeah, they're a minimum 10 feet per second faster. Yeah. Minimum. Which, I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter in traditional bows anyway. I mean, it's all Even about accuracy. Even on shot good, though. Yeah, at least. Buried Yeah, bow's quiet, too. It is. See, that's what I'm saying, guys. You get these bows set up. They're extremely quiet bows. You want to go ahead and sling a broadhead real quick? Extremely, yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Here's a, uh, here's the Magnus. We're going to shoot a broadhead at the little target out there. I don't know where it is, but I'll guarantee you this thing will hit just like the field tips do. Just like them. Showing it up there what it was. They're showing them the rig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 150 grain Magnus. Weighs the exact same thing as what we had. Exact same thing as the field tip. Sling one down there. Now. He's going to be happy. He's going to be real happy with this setup. Oh, Which yeah. I was just before yeah. they shoot good. It flew good. It was real good. And that's what matters. If it will fly ahead that good, that's what matters. Yeah, they shoot one more time. I was more worried about how it was going to fly. Yeah, it flies good. These things are going to fly just like the field tip. They're going to. As a matter of fact, let me spin it on this table. Oh, yeah. No wobble at all. Perfect. What you want? Spin them. If they spin good, absolutely. We know now what the setup is for this guy. He's ready to go to the woods, man. Look oh, at right. oh, yeah. Ready. He's ready to kill ready some deer, ain't he? Well, <laughs> I guess that's about it. That's man. it, guys. That's the wrap. Complete ILF setup. Super quick. Nothing to it. And there again, every bow's different. Okay? Every bow's different. You just have to play with your draw length, your weight, whatever it is. Uh, if you're gonna have to cut your arrows down, start with half inch increments. I mean, just start with half inch. Uh, if the bow, if your arrows are already pre-fletched, you're just gonna have to strip you one of them. Just gonna have to cut them off one and go with it. If you're fletching them yourself, you got two choices. If you're going to build an ethics system and you don't want to play with the glue and taking them on and off and on and off and on and off, you can cut off the back of the shaft. You can. You can just you can glue your system on and say, okay, I want 300 grains up front or 320, whatever you want to do. Put it on there and start cutting from the back a half inch at a time till you get down to a quarter inch at a time until that arrow is straight as it can be. Draw you a line. And whatever medium you're using and you got to make sure that you're shooting into something that won't lie to you a bag will lie uh, most 3d targets will lie yeah. uh, anything that when it goes in it lets that arrow move it's not going to give you a true reading you have to have to have something like that blob material that is not going to do that it, that that arrow is going to go in and wherever it, if it goes in weak or strong or, or stiff whatever it's going to continue to be that way and give you a correct reading so that's what makes it easy. So guys, that's it. We hope you enjoyed this one. That's what we call from box to broadhead. Yep. Box to broadheads, done. This guy's ready to hunt, man. It's super easy and we love doing it. So uh, he's gonna be very excited to get this one, I'm sure. So uh, well, he'll uh, he'll definitely be ready to hunt. And uh, I think all he's gotta do is do now strap on a quiver and uh, get his broadhead screwed on there and he's ready to go. That's it. Until next time, thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, we pray God bless you and thank you so much for supporting us the way you have. Uh, we just love bringing it to you and hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, have a good one. Thank on you. Instinctive Addiction, thank you.